This is the Snapmaker U1, and it might be one of the most exciting 3D printers of 2025. It's a four-head tool changer 3D printer that beats the competition at multicolor 3D printing in a lot of awesome ways. Let's dive into what makes this 3D printer special. First off, a little disclaimer, this is a pre-production beta unit, so hardware, software, and firmware will change between this printer and the final unit. Hardware, probably only minor tweaks. The firmware and software, on the other hand, I do know they have some big changes on the way. I'm not usually interested in testing out beta units because there are so many issues I've run into, but this was such an exciting machine, I'm really glad I said yes. Since this is a beta unit, I wouldn't consider this a full review of this machine because if you buy a U1, you're not going to get this same machine. Hopefully it'll be a much better machine. This is more a first look at what I was able to make on this machine, point out a few of the issues that I did run into. A lot of them I know have been addressed and they just need to push the next update on the firmware. Snapmaker is mostly known for their 3-in-1 3D printers. That's a 3D printer, a CNC machine, and a laser engraver. This is just a 3D printer and it has four tool heads on here. That's four different nozzles, extruders, fans, everything. This front carriage here does the motion and has a fan in it. That's all it does. It's got a build volume of 270 millimeters in every dimension. That's a good mid-range 3D printer. It's not a small printer. It's definitely not the largest out there. This is what 270 millimeters tall is. Really tall things you can print. And when you coil up things like this dragon, you can print even larger. It's not an enclosed printer, but there are these divots and pegs up here. It's basically designed to be put inside of an enclosure. They said they're working on one that's gonna come later on. So currently no high temperature filaments in here, no AVS, no ASA, but you can print PLA, PETG, and TPU. On the top back of the printer, there's a six pin port here. Not sure what this is gonna be added onto, probably something with the enclosure on top, maybe a fan, maybe a heater, could be several different things, could be used for nothing at all. Similar down here on the power switch, there's a USB port and then an add-on port with a four pin plug down here. They haven't said what this is for, but it adds options for the future. It comes with a rear window in the back of the printer. This is pretty unique to this printer. There's a piece of plexiglass back here so that from behind the printer, you can see the actual print happening. It's glass on the front, plexiglass on the back. Each of these print carriages comes with three aligning pegs and three pogo pins. These are for powering the fan. This print carriage doesn't have any other wires going to it. It gets all its power through those three pogo pins. Each of these is detachable. I can manually pull it off like this. You can see the gears inside there to drive the filament. So if anything goes wrong, you will be able to see the issues going inside there. Mounting it is pretty simple. This long rod here goes through here. And back here, there is another sensor probably telling whether this is docked or not. So you just slide it through. Mount it on there. They are fairly simple to take off or put on. The filament poop chute is down here below. It's pretty simple to take off. You're not gonna be producing very much poop with this printer, so it doesn't need to be a very big tray. So this is the home screen. Any of that artifacting is not really a thing. It's all just camera tricks playing on it. Some of these is great, some of it isn't great. This button down here doesn't do anything. To start a print, you press start. This opens up all the files that it currently has on here. You can scroll through there really easily if I wanna start a print. You can select which color you want here. Select next. Then you can select your print preferences, extrusion flow calibration, a heated bed leveling, or to do an auto time lapse and then you can select print to start your object. This is kind of the menu settings. Some of this also needs to change usage statistics here. This is the one button I have found that doesn't do anything, which is fine, but it's just a, another thing that reminds me that this is a beta pre-production unit. But device calibration does, and you can rerun your calibrations, your vibration comp, heated bed leveling, your multi-tool head offset calibration and it gives you a time estimate for these, which is great. Turning on or off the internal LED, changing thing, heating things up, turning the fans on, tool heads, you can have it grab different tool heads. This is how you manually remove filament. You go on here, select which fil temperature you want, say 220 or so, that covers most filaments. It'll heat up and then you can either extrude or manually retract filament. 
then after you're done with that, turn it back to zero. Have it return the tool head. Here's where you adjust the filaments. That is Snapmaker filament, so it uses an RFID tag to automatically know what filament that is. These with the little pencil, these ones I have manually put in there. It's not really Snapmaker PLA, but it does have Snapmaker, Polymaker, or a generic PLA. And then you can select which color you use. I don't love the color options here on this, but I'm colorblind and I never like this on most printers. To remove filament, you select it and then press, press unload. And even in a lot of places here, it has a manual. So it can give you a more elaborate description of how to do things, which is awesome. The slicer for this printer is a brand new Snapmaker Orca. They've, just like every other company, they've taken Orca Slicer and put their own skin on it. This is definitely a beta version out right now. One of the biggest issues is there is currently a memory leak. I do have a pretty powerful computer with a lot of memory in there, but whenever Snapmaker Orca Slicer is open, the printer just dips in performance every now and then. But they do know about this and they're working on it. But this printer can run just normal G-code, so you could just use normal Orca Slicer with this printer. And since it is a Clipper-based firmware, you do have full access to the Fluid main page. Just connect this to Wi-Fi and navigate to this printer's IP address. That gives you full control of the printer and being able to navigate and change things is really awesome. The benefits of a tool changer system here over an AMS system. With a tool changer, you have four different nozzles here, so you don't need to purge between filaments. On a more normal AMS-like system, all of the filament is coming through the same nozzle, so if you switch between white and a dark color like black, you have to purge a lot of filament through that nozzle to clear all the pigment away. With this, you don't have to clear any pigment. You do need to prime the nozzle though. This was the prime tower for this Flexi Dragon, so this much waste for all of this printing. It's also able to print these multicolor prints way faster than a traditional system. Because it doesn't need to retract the filament all the way out of the nozzle, bring the new filament all the way in, purge it all the way through, and then start again, it just needs to dock one tool head, pick up the next one, and then it can start printing. Now let's talk about the prints I was able to make with this printer. I'm really impressed with what this printer is able to do, especially how quickly and efficiently it's able to do it. First off, I started with some simple fidget gears. These things are super easy to make because it doesn't produce very much waste. After all of my printing, this is how much poop this printer has produced. Really not very much. For comparison, on the recent Flashforge AD5X, I printed this one Orca cube in multicolor, and this is how much poop it made for this single print versus what was made for all of these prints. Now it's not without any waste, you do need to do a prime tower. Since the nozzle is docked while it's cooling down and then heating back up again, it does park the nozzle on a silicone bumper that helps hold the filament in, but it's still gonna be oozing a little bit. I think the default setting is to prime 35 millimeters cubed per color, and then it starts on the print again. This is such a cool Flexi Dragon. I did use all four colors just to really push it to its limits using yellow as the main electrical shock bits, some light blue, and even some white here on the edges and on the eyeballs in there. Very not necessary to add all these colors in here, but I was pushing it to its limit to really see what it could do. So inside of Clipper, I can check the history of how long these prints took. I don't know if this actual print time includes the startup routine, because I did select different startup routines for different prints, but either way, this is kind of an estimate. It said this dragon took 22 hours and 22 minutes. The estimate inside of Snapmaker Orca is that it would take 10 hours to print this in one color, but it did say that the estimate for printing this full thing was 16 hours, actual time being 22 hours. But it's pretty incredible that something this intricate and multicolor can be printed inside of a day. Next up we have this vase. It's not a vase mode print, it is a solid wall vase. I added all these colors on here and I think it turned out really cool. The time to print was 17 hours and 49 minutes. The one color estimate on their Orca Slicer is 4.5 hours. So a pretty good jump in time. For comparison, I sliced this in the Bamboo Slicer and for the Bamboo A1, it said it would take two days, 10 hours and 37 minutes. So 17 hours for something like this starts to look a lot better. 
A big benefit to being a tool changer printer is how it good it is at isolating colors here. Normally when multicolor printing with white, any other color that pigment will bleed into the white, but here it's on a different nozzle, so there's really good color separation here. Even when using very bright colors like this yellow or a dark blue here. This turned out incredible. Another great feature is being able to print in different materials. This top is printed in TPU and then you're easily able to add PLA supports to be really stiff on the bottom. This I waited to remove while we're on the camera here. There we go. Just a little bit of blue stuck in there. The ability to add multi-material supports onto a flexible ball like this is really cool. I did run into some issues with TPU printing. Their TPU profiles aren't great and I do think it needs some tuning. This does have a lot of stringing here, but I don't know if it's because this filament needs to be dried out. That's the issue with TPU. It's really finicky and I think I just need a lot more work on it. I did try to print this in multiple different colors of TPU all at the same time, but some of the extruders struggled with different TPUs. I don't know if that's because different TPUs by different manufacturers are different stiffnesses. There's a lot of nuances to different TPUs and it is a tricky filament to print. But this one did print really well and being able to add supports on something like this is a really cool feature. Here we've got two Benchies, a single color and a multicolor. This shows the print quality here. It's decent, not the absolute best print quality, especially on a matte filament like this, but still really good. They were both printed using their default slicer profile. So the standard Benchy took 35 minutes of print time. And then the four color Benchy took two hours and 22 minutes. And before anyone comments down below that your Bamboo A1 can print a Benchy in sub 20 minutes, no it can't, not using the default print profile. Go into the slicer, select standard 0.2 millimeter profile, and the Bamboo A1 slices and it says it'll take 37 minutes using that profile. That's what I'm comparing here. So this is a pretty standard speed benchy. In general, I did find that the filament changes are more of a linear increase in time. So for example, this benchy took 30 minutes. This took almost two and a half hours because the filament changes, it was almost constant filament changes here. It would change, do a little bit of white printing, change immediately, do a little bit of black printing, change again, switch to yellow printing versus something really large like this it takes a lot longer on each one. Each layer uses each color a lot longer on a print like this. In general, when testing this printer, I found I just enjoyed adding multiple colors to random objects I was printing. This is a simple edge finder, but you can add multiple colors here because it really doesn't add very much time to something and it almost adds no waste. The current profile for this printer did have a pretty bad Z seam. I did tune it in a little bit and turn on scarf seam and that decreased it pretty well, but I do think it needs a little bit more tuning. So that's another issue with just currently it's a beta, and the, but the seam can be an issue if you're looking for prints to fit really well together. But that's just a print profile issue and even I've been able to improve it substantially. I also printed a few multi-board parts in multiple colors. I think these look so cool being printed in multiple colors like this. So do I recommend this 3D printer? If you want the best multicolor 3D printer, even in its sort of buggy beta state that I've been testing it at, this is the best multi-material, multi-color 3D printer that I've tested. The amount of things I can do on this printer that I wouldn't even try to do on other printers because of the added time and waste. Something cool like this I would never do in three different colors on another printer. But on this, the printer is fast enough, it's a minor hit in time to be able to print this in three different colors. Is this truly necessary? I mean, no, it's purely visual, but I still think it's really cool. And if you're looking for a printer in this price range, and multicolor or multi-material is something you're interested in, this is a really great option. Changing filament here is a little bit slower than in a normal style 3D printer that uses a separate filament box from bamboo or Creality type printers. If you are thinking about checking out this printer, depending on when you're watching this, check the description down below. I will have some affiliate links to the early bird special or whatever coupon codes I can find. Those really help the channel out at no additional cost to you. As always, if there are any more questions you have about this 3D printer, let me know in the comments down below. I do have a lot of YouTube shorts planned for the next couple of weeks, covering all of these 3D prints maybe in more depth, so you can subscribe so you don't miss any of those. As always, go out there, create something amazing, and I'll see you in the next video.